Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome to Permacrafters webinar on the benefits of growing sprouts and microgreens. I'm Christelle. I'm from Permacrafters. I'm an environmental educator. I'm also a permaculture instructor from Switzerland. So don't be fooled by that Polish flag behind me. I'm actually in Switzerland right now. So it's actually the evening for me. Um, and I'm also a Sprouts fanatic and I'm a raw foods enthusiast. And as I said, I'm from Permacrafters. Permacrafters is a permaculture lifestyle blog and an online learning website that was founded by myself and the wonderful Christina, who is not here physically with me, but she is in North Carolina and she's gonna help uh, take your comments. Uh, she, Christina is a Peruvian crafter. She also discovered permaculture and fell in love with it. She's also crazy about sprouts. We're hooked on to the good stuff. And together, Christina and I just make a really great team. And our mission at Permacrafters is to share self-reliant skills and encourage creative permaculture thinking for an abundant life. So you might be asking yourself, okay, well, what's permaculture? And I could teach a whole other webinar on that, but in a nutshell, uh, it's an ethical design system for a sustainable human culture. So in other words, it's a philosophy for living sustainably while respecting the Earth's resources, while respecting people and sharing fairly. Those are the three uh, foundational uh, foundations of, uh, of permaculture, the three ethics. So in all the projects that Christine and I do, we use these ethics and principles of permaculture to help us design our crafts and our lives. And we really just love pouring our creativity into everything we do. You can check out our, our blog. Uh, everything we do always has sustainability in mind. Uh, we love handcrafting our own body products, our own cleaners, our own herbal medicine, our own decorations and tools, and we love growing stuff, including sprouts and microgreens. So today, if you're here, it's because you want to learn, hopefully, about the benefits of growing sprouts and microgreens. So I would actually love to hear where you all are tuning in from. So if you could please tell me in the chat box right now uh, where you're from and whether you have any experience growing microgreens, that would be great. So hi, we have Laura from Zurich. That's interesting. We also have another person in Switzerland. Well, hi, we're on the same time zone. Thanks for being here, Laura. And we have Robert from California. Hi, Robert, good to have you. Must be morning for you. So it's good to, good to have both of you. Um, well, good, we have two beginners. So this class is actually perfect uh, for, for beginners. So, um, so let's dive right to it. I'm going to share my screen with you. Let's see, make sure this works. All right, start screen share. All right, here we go. So you just saw me, so that's me, <laughs> um, cutting the, 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 the microgreens there. And you have Christina, who's, um, who's to the left there. And as I said, she's in North Carolina. She's going to be helping out with, with any questions you might have today. Um, so if you're just joining us, you are right on time, because uh, we're just about to delve into the benefits of growing sprouts and microgreens. Also, just for the chat box, I know that it might be difficult for some of you to comment, because you have to exit. Um, if you're on your phone, you have to exit to another window. Um, so if you have any burning questions, you know, we'll, we'll take them at the end. So um, if it's too hard for you, no, no worries for there. Um, I'll also just mention briefly that if you are an Instagram user and you want to share anything about your sprouting adventures, you can use the why we sprout hashtag so that we can find each other um, and interact on that platform as well. It's a great way to stay motivated uh, on this indoor gardening journey. Also, all right, this is my favorite part. <laughs> um, I'm letting you know that we have a special bonus in store for live viewers that will be announced at the end of the webinar. So stay tuned for details on that at the end. It won't be available afterwards, but here's a little sneak peek image of it right now. So something to look forward to. So let's get to it. Uh, who is this webinar for? Well, you are in exactly the right place if you're looking to make a healthy choice to incorporate raw sprouted foods into your diet. Sprouts are jam-packed with nutrients. They're fantastic health allies. So today we're gonna dive into their nutritional properties as we you know, dig deeper into their health benefits today. And this class is also for you if you're brand new to gardening. So we have two beginners, right? Laura and Robert. So you'll learn that it doesn't take uh, a gardening guru to successfully grow sprouts and microgreens. That's a, one of the huge benefits of growing these greens because if you're anything like me, you might have um, a track record of uh, killing your house plants. So if I can succeed at this, uh, you can too. I, I promise you that. <laughs> You're also in luck and you're smack dab in the right place if you're a fan of sprouts but you're tired of paying outrageous prices for store-bought sprouts on a daily or weekly basis. Um, you know, when you grow them at home, you'll be saving a lot of money and the supplies that you need to get started are actually pretty basic. 
You're also just in the right place if you're looking to get into a sprouting routine that becomes second nature for you to you. So if you want sprouts to become a part of your day-to-day -day life or if you're looking to have plant allies year-round that will get you the best nutrients even on the coldest winter day or if you want to wow your house guests with a big bounty and variety of sprouted greens and these green babies are what you want to be learning about and growing. So that's me and Christina <laughs> dancing in front of a big bounty of greens. Um, I wanted to sh take a moment to share about um, you know, our, our, how we got into, into sprouting and, and why we love it so much. So if we're giving this webinar, it's clearly because we've both experienced the benefits of these little plants firsthand. Um, so I'll just go ahead and start with my experience. About eight years ago, I was suffering from chronic fatigue. I had a lot of anxiety. I had difficulty concentrating. And I had pretty terrible skin. I was embarrassed to, to leave the house, to be honest. Um, and I'd heard from a family friend that the Life Transformation Program at the Hippocrates Health Institute in Florida, which is based mostly on eating raw food and no sugar, and plant-based too, that it had cured her arthritis and that it was helping people heal from many illnesses. So I was skeptical, but I was also eager for a solution. So I turned to eating a similarly uh, raw food, plant-based diet. So for three weeks, it was pretty intense. I ate nothing but raw food, and 60% of that food in volume was sprouts and microgreens. And if I'm being totally honest, uh, going into it, I really was not a fan of the taste of sprouts, so I will admit that straight up. But little did I know, there's actually a huge variety of sprouts to choose from, so they're really varied in texture and in taste. So I ended up finding some that I, that I really, uh, really enjoyed. So what happened over the course of those three weeks really surprised me. First, my taste buds changed. I had heard this before, but I had never experienced it. So I wasn't forcing down the sprouts anymore. I was actually super excited to pile the delicious sprouts onto my plate and, and dig in. So it was really surprising for me to, you know, there were some that I couldn't stand like alfalfa, and I ended up loving them after just three weeks. So, I mean, heck, I'm teaching a class about them now, so I really do love them now. The other thing that happened was that really amazed me was that the first 10 days were they were terrible because I was craving pasta and cooked food. But remember, this is because I was eating only raw food and no sugar, right? But once I got over that hump, I was super energetic. My skin, which I had problems with for years, it finally clear cleared up and my mental clarity was back. The third thing, the last thing that I experienced was also serenity. I dealt with anxiety about food and my body image. Um, fortunately, I think a lot of young women deal with this. And for the first time in years, I actually felt serene. Uh, Mealtime had become a, a pleasure as opposed to a stressor. So needless to say, after just three weeks, I was really sold on the power of sprouts and microgreens. And so to be clear, I'm not telling anyone to be on the 60% sprouts and microgreens diet. That's actually not in fact at all what I'm encouraging. I just wanted to share what what sprouts and microgreens did for me and why I now regularly incorporate them uh, into my diet, which for the record, I'm not, uh, I don't eat only raw foods. I do eat mostly plant-based, but I, I do eat cooked foods as well. So, and I'm actually recovering from open heart surgery right now. I had um, two heart defects that were repaired in January. And I can tell you that I'm really grateful to have learned how to grow these power packed greens to support me in my health journey as I recover and continue on with my life. Then Christina, her experience has also been really positive. She's especially crazy about microgreens. She eats them regularly. She reports that her energy levels have increased, that she doesn't get sick as often as she used to. She used to complain about digestive ailments. But she tells me that her digestion has been much better since eating the greens regularly. And health benefits aside, she's actually gained a lot of confidence in growing food. She started larger, larger gardening projects with much more self-assurance. Uh, not to mention that she has a ton of fun in the kitchen creating new recipes with sprouts and microgreens. So today I'm going to go over some nutritional data about microgreens and sprouts that was published several years ago. And it absolutely wowed me when I first saw it. But it, it really only made sense to me how potent nutritionally these plants are. So if our stories don't sell you on your power, I know that the data will definitely speak for itself. So what is on the agenda for today? I'll start by walking you through what sprouting is and what sprouts and microgreens are exactly. Then we'll dive into the benefits of growing sprouts and microgreens. We'll start with the, their health benefits from their ability to reduce toxins to their increased uh, nutrient composition as compared to their mature counterparts and how they facilitate uh, digestion. Then we'll move on to um, the many other uh, benefits of growing these baby plants at home. We'll talk about how growing these greens is really suited for any person who's dreaming of affordable access to a large variety of nutrients year-round. They're much more nutritious when they're grown and harvested at home. So 
Before we dive into the material, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear, are you interested in growing the sprouts and microgreens yourselves uh, or just eating them? <laughs> um, and I would love to know how your life would be better if growing sprouts and microgreens was second nature to you and part of your daily routine. So I'm gonna head back to the chat box and see, see what's going on. Oh, gotta reconnect here. Okay, oh, and there's Anna, too, who's joining from North Carolina. Oh, we have somebody else from North Carolina. That's cool. Uh, I just moved from North Carolina to Switzerland. Um, Anna says, I've heard a lot about their benefits, so from a health perspective, it'd be pretty great. Oh, to incorporate them into your diet. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Thank you for commenting. Oh, and it looks like, okay, so Christina is under the name Program Crafters, by the way. <laughs> um, all right. Well, awesome. I know there's a little lag, but I'll get back to if anybody has any in there, the comments after. So yeah, from a health perspective, these guys are amazing to grow. So we're about to delve into that. You're, you're going to be uh, wowed, I think. So let's get to it. Um, so what is sprouting and what are sprouts and microgreens? So sprouting is the practice of germinating seeds, and you can germinate all kinds of seeds from leafy greens to legumes, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. All of these can be sprouted. So seeds have a dormant germ inside of them, and it's brought to life when it's shocked in water and kept in optimal moisture conditions. So to germinate, it doesn't need any sunlight. So when you think about it, seeds are designed to start their lives under the soil in the dark outdoors. So to sprout, the seed doesn't need any additional nutrients either. It's only using the nutrients that it has stored inside of itself to sprout. So your job as the sprouter, let's say, is just to give it the water that it needs. So once you do that, your seeds germinate and they are officially sprouts. So after two to seven days of growth, depending on your seed and on your taste preference, you can eat your sprouts, you can eat the roots, the stem, the underdeveloped leaves, everything can be eaten. And I also say based on your taste preference, because the taste of the sprouts will evolve from day two to day seven. Um, also, all types of seeds will sprout. However, not all plants are meant to be eaten as sprouts. Some are toxic at this stage. But if you're purchasing your seeds from a sprouting company, then you're in good shape. You have nothing to worry about. If you're buying your seeds from high mowing organic seeds, for instance, they specifically package seeds for sprouting and for uh, growing microgreens. They are our go-to seed company because they have great options for bulk purchases. And I just miss, I just moved to Switzerland. And I really miss having them, but I just uh, purchased some here. But uh, if you are in the States, high mowing is, is pretty neat. So we've covered sprouts, so what are microgreens? Um, most plants begin their lives as seeds and sprouts, and microgreens are essentially young sprouts that kept maturing for a week or two longer, but in different conditions, usually, uh, sorry, all the time, with light and usually in soil. So after about a week or so, sprouts will run out of their energy source. So if they want to keep growing, they need sunlight to start photosynthesizing and nutrient-rich soil or a hydroponic system for further nutrition and to support their roots. So microgreens are about one to three inches uh, in height. So they're larger than sprouts, but they're smaller than baby salad greens. So, haha. This is the science to me. Scientifically speaking, a microgreen does not become a microgreen until its true leaves develop. So what does that mean? So here I'm using an, uh, a cilantro microgreen as an example. The first set of leaves on the cilantro microgreen are the cotyledons. These come from the seed's embryo. And then the second set of leaves that are starting to grow uh, where the cotyledon splits are known as the true leaves. So they develop from the plant's stem. So technically, once the true leaves appear, it's officially a microgreen. So if the true leaves are not there yet, it's technically called a soil sprout, but a lot of companies that sell seeds for sprouts and microgreens will refer to these, uh, quote, soil sprouts as microgreens. They ask you to harvest them when the first uh, leaves appear. And then you have pea shoots, which are technically shoots, not microgreens. They are also commonly referred to as microgreens. It just depends on the company that you're purchasing your seeds from. So for the sake of simplicity, uh, we just like to refer to all of these as microgreens, just like many sprouting companies do. So with microgreens, you usually just eat the leaves and the stems, but you can you can eat the roots as well sometimes, like with radish microgreens, which for the record are super delicious. They taste amazing on a sandwich or soup because they're, they're spicy, they're, they're really nice. So 
should you eat your seeds as sprouts or as microgreens? Because really, you could technically grow them as both. It really depends. Some taste equally good as both, like radishes and broccoli. So often it's just a matter of preference, whether you prefer milder flavors or stronger flavors, because the flavors will evolve at their different stages of growth. So it's up to you to explore. So why would you want to grow sprouts and microgreens? So we're gonna start with the health benefits. The primary two health reasons to sprout your seeds are to remove toxins and maximize their nutritional value. So how does sprouting remove toxins? All seeds have toxins to protect themselves from being eaten by bacteria, by fungus, by animals, because without these toxins as an evolutionary strategy, the seeds would not have survived. If you soak the seeds though, that's the first step in the sprouting process, those toxic substances are reduced as the seeds begin to germinate. So raw lentils, for instance, they have lectins, which are also, they're just anti-nutritional proteins in them. But if you sprout them, it reduces those lectins. You can also reduce them by cooking, but then you end up losing a lot of the lentils nutritional value. So I'll go more into the importance of raw food uh, in a moment. The second reason to sprout is that sprouts offer the best nutritional value of all land-based fruits and veggies. Plants are at the peak of their nutritional value when they are at their sprout stage. So if you compare a sprout with a dry seed or a sprout with its fully grown counterpart, a lot of the time, the sprout will have more vitamins, minerals, carotenoids, proteins, and essential fatty acids. Why is that? Sprouting essentially kicks the seeds into life. It jump starts their metabolic activity, right? So these little seeds are packed with all the nutrients that they'll need to grow without any sun or any additional nutrients for a week. So enzymes in the seeds are rapidly converting all their concentrated nutrients into complex materials to help them grow into mature plants. Sprouts are also the best enzyme-rich foods. So these enzymes essentially pre-digest complex nutritional no, 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 that was hard. <laughs> they pre-digest complex nutritional structures, so they make them easily digestible and easily assimilated by your body. So for example, carbohydrates will become simple sugars, complex proteins will become easily digestible amino acids, fats will be converted to fatty acids, and vitamin levels will surge. So sprouts by design are meant to facilitate your digestion. So let's look at some data. I wanna compare an unsprouted seed to a sprouted seed. And I wanna start by looking at lentils in particular. So the nutritional values that I gathered here to make the comparisons were extracted from the USDA nutrient database, by the way. So with dry lentils, for instance, unsprouted lentils, the amount of vitamin C content is quite low. But if you sprout the lentils, however, they're one of the better sources of vitamin C. Sprouted lentils are close to four times higher in concentration by weight of vitamin C than raw lentils. Pretty crazy. <laughs> so then if you look at mung beans, sprouted mung beans have vitamin K content that's close to four times higher by weight than raw mung beans. So you would need close to two cups of raw mung beans to equal to equal one cup of sprouted mung beans in terms of vitamin K. So sprouted mung beans are also uh, close to three times more concentrated in vitamin C by weight than raw mung beans. And then for comparison's sake, let's look at a sprouted seed compared to a cooked seed. So if you boil mung beans, they barely have any vitamin C left as compared to sprouted mung beans. So this is why I stress the importance of eating foods raw, at least whenever you can, especially when you're dealing with sprouts and microgreens because you lose a lot of nutrients when you cook foods and to me against it goes against the whole point of growing sprouts and microgreens if you go ahead and cook them afterwards because when they're raw they're the, those nutrients that you're after are really intact so with that being said some sprouts should be cooked because they're too difficult to digest and uh, those that would include black beans pinto beans and brown rice then you have some other sprouts like quinoa or soybeans where it's it's optional to cook them it depends on your preference so if you eat any of these seeds you can you know regularly you can sprout them prior to cooking to boost their nutritional value and you'll lose less nutrients if you decide to cook them lightly afterwards so let's compare a sprout to its mature counterpart. Let's look at radishes in particular. So somebody once asked me, how many cups of fully grown radishes would you need to eat to get the equal nutrition to a cup of radish sprouts? That's an excellent question, but it's also a trick question because <laughs> it depends on the nutrient that you're trying to get the equivalent of, right? So for vitamin A, 
you would need to eat 19 cups of mature raw radishes to equal one cup of radish sprouts. And then for monounsaturated fatty acids, you would need eight cups of mature raw radishes to equal one cup of sprouts. So these sprouts are powerful. They pack a mean punch of essential nutrients. Then you'll get magnesium. You need a cup and a half of mature radishes to equal one cup of sprouts. Um, but all of these numbers are just in terms of volume. So if you look in terms of weight, 100 grams of sprouted radishes have four and a half times more magnesium than raw mature radishes. They have 56 times more vitamin A. They are 45 times more concentrated in monounsaturated fatty acids, and they're six times more concentrated in phosphorus. So compared to their mature counterparts, radish sprouts are jam-packed with nutrients. And then Radishes are also consumed for their anti-cancer properties because they contain sulforaphane. It's a nutrient that has anti-cancer properties, anti-diabetic, and antimicrobial proper properties. So cruciferous vegetables in general are very high in sulforaphane, like cabbage or wasabi or watercress, for example. And scientists attribute their high concentration of sulforaphane to decreased mortality, to decreased cancer-specific mortality in particular in terms of uh, bladder, lung, prostate, and breast cancers specifically. And then broccoli sprouts, so to the right there, broccoli sprouts in particular are the number one best source of sulforaphane. So, you know, it's written here, sulforaphane has anti-cancer properties. It has been shown to prevent cancer in mice that were exposed to carcinogens to slow cancer project progression in humans and uh, to be a potential antidepressant too. So they actually had a small clinical trial in 2011 where they found that broccoli sprouts, which, you know, again, they're the highest natural source of sulforaphane, that eating these improved the behavioral of the behavior of individuals with autism. Then there was another smaller study that was conducted in 2015 that found that the cognitive abilities of people with schizophrenia improved when given sulforaphane extract from broccoli sprouts. So pretty interesting studies there. And then, you know, again, broccoli sprouts are the number one best source. They contain up to 100 times more of the sulforaphane precursor glucorophanin than mature broccoli, and they're 20 to 50 times more concentrated in sulforaphane than fully grown broccoli, right? <laughs> so again, the sprouts are incredibly charged with nutritional value as compared to their mature counterparts. So what quantity of broccoli sprouts would you need to consume to reap the health benefits of sulforaphane? So according to Dr. Rhonda Patrick, she has a great talk on this, depending on what you're consuming them for, if you're consuming them for anti-cancer or depression, you may want anywhere from 40 to 60 milligrams a day of sulforaphane, which is 100 to 140 grams a day of, of broccoli sprouts. So in easy terms, one pint-sized jar gets you about 60 milligrams of sulforaphane, so you'd want five to seven jars of sprouts on rotation. So if it's sulforaphane you're after, um, that's how you can do it. So Dr. Rhonda Patrick has a great online video on sulforaphane and broccoli sprouts if you want to learn uh, more in depth about this topic. So if you eat a variety of sprouted leafy greens, of grains, of nuts, they're a source of complete protein because they contain all eight essential amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. So if you're looking to add more protein to your diet, supplemented with a, supplementing with a variety of sprouted seeds is, is an excellent way to do so. And then these sprouts also absorb minerals and trace elements from your rinsing water like iodine, zinc, selenium, chromium, cobalt, and silicon. So if you're, uh, so you're getting those essential minerals and trace elements when you sprout, which is why you want to use filtered water. <laughs> so uh, what about microgreens? So microgreens also boast a high nutritional value since they're grown in the sun. The difference is that they'll have chlorophyll in them and depending on the richness of the soil they're grown in, potentially more nutrients than sprouts. Uh, light can also affect the nutritional potency of your microgreens. And then microgreen nutrition is also affected by how you harvest them and how long it takes for them to reach your plate. So you don't wanna cut your microgreens and let them sit out for hours before consuming them or they'll, have, they'll lose a lot of their nutritional value, for example. But we won't get into the growing and harvesting guidelines today that uh, help you make sure to get the most out of your greens, but there are, are ways to get um, to make sure you get the most bang for, for your buck. Oh, this study, this study is so cool, you guys. <laughs> So in 2012, there was a study that was published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry by Chow Wang and Lester at the University of Maryland. 
These guys looked at 25 commercially available sprouts and their nutrition as compared to their fully grown counterparts. So I'll call it the 2012 study. This was the first study of its kind because there really there's only a, a handful of data on sprouts and microgreens that's available, some of which I just shared earlier, but not really an in-depth study like this. So they compared microgreens to their mature counterparts, and this is what they found. So compared to mature garnet amaranth, garnet amaranth microgreens have four times more vitamin K, 11 times more vitamin C. So this is always by volume, right? Um, so that's for, for amaranth. But then let's look at cilantro. I love cilantro. So, so mature cilantro, um, sorry, cilantro microgreens have three times more beta carotene than mature cilantro and 11 times more lutein xanthin, which are carotenoids that are impossible to pronounce. Try to say that three times fast. Um, so yeah, they have 11 times more of these beta carotenoids, um, of these carotenoids, sorry. And then the microgreen that takes home the cake is red cabbage. So red cabbage microgreens have six times more vitamin C 20 times more lutein xanthin, 40 times more vitamin E, and 200, get this, 260 times more beta carotene. Like, that's just, this study wowed the researchers themselves, and it just circulated like wildfire throughout the raw foods and microgreens community. It was solid proof that baby plants were absolutely packed with much, much more nutrients than their mature selves. And the numbers are absolutely impressive. And I didn't mention wheatgrass, but I'm sure you've heard of it being a superfood. It wasn't one of the microgreens that the scientists studied, but previous research seemed to indicate that it's abundant in chlorophyll. And many health practitioners claim that uh, it contains every amino acid, vitamin, and mineral necessary for human nutrition. So it's definitely potent, which is why people typically just have a small shot of wheatgrass. So you might be wondering, well, great, <laughs> now let me know which microgreens I need to start eating in order to dish my daily multivitamin pills. So we're not doctors, by the way, so I'm just letting you know which are the best sources of certain vitamins and carotenoids. So let's start with vitamin C. So vitamin C, uh, as you might know, it's an important vitamin for immune system strength, right? right? Um, but it also helps prevent cardiovascular disease, eye diseases, and prenatal health problems, among many other things. So in terms of vitamin C, the highest concentration of it is found in red cabbage, which is a true superpower microgreen, right? Red cabbage keeps popping up. Then it's followed by garnet amaranth, uh, China rose radish, opal basil, and opal radish microgreens. So all of these, which are pictured here, have higher concentrations of vitamin C than even broccoli does, which is generally considered an excellent source of vitamin C already. So if you have trouble eating your share of broccoli, you can consider putting some red cabbage leaves in a fruit smoothie and call it good. <laughs> Carotenoids are next. Carotenoids help reduce the risk of cancers and eye diseases. Uh, beta carotenoids, in particular, um, they're a precursor to vitamin A or retinol, which promotes healthy skin, healthy mucous membranes, good eye health and vision, and a strong immune system. So, your best beta carotene sources would be, in terms of microgreens, in terms of anything, because microgreens are, are the best, <laughs> um, would be red sorrel, followed by cilantro red cabbage again, and peppercress. And then you also have wasabi, green basil, uh, pea tendrils, garnet amaranth, which are also good sources of beta carotene. So really, other than popcorn, uh, shoots, popcorn shoots and golden pea tendrils, the 2012 study found that all 25 microgreens they tested had either the same amount or much more beta carotene than carrots, which are already excellent sources of beta carotene uh, themselves, right? That's why rabbits have good sight because they eat carrots all the time. Um, so if you are not a fan of carrots, um, you can sprinkle some red sorrel on your dish uh, to help you get the beta carotene equivalent that you need. And then lutein xanthin. They're both very important, impronounceable carotenoids for eye health. They can help uh, prevent eye diseases like cataracts, for example. So lutein is also used to prevent heart disease, colon cancer, and breast cancer. The best sources of lutein xanthin are cilantro, red sorrel, red cabbage, and garnet amaranth. So again, you know, cilantro and red sorrel and red cabbage, they just keep popping up. Next up is vitamin K, 
ortholoquinone, which supports bone health and it's used to treat certain bleeding disorders. So garnet amaranth came in first place for the best source of vitamin K, followed by red sorrel, green basil, pea tendrils, and again, red cabbage. So when we're talking about regular vegetables, not babies, um, vitamin K has its highest concentration in broccoli, in spinach, kale, and these other you know, dark green veggies. And this 2012 study, they found that 18 out of the 25 microgreens they tested had K levels, vitamin K levels that were equal or higher than broccoli, which shows that many microgreens can really serve as an excellent source of vitamin K. Finally, there's vitamin E, which is an antioxidant that is essential for a strong immune system, for healthy skin and healthy eyes, and it was most highly concentrated in green daikon radish, followed by cilantro, by opal radish, and peppercress microgreens. So all of these plants are much, much more concentrated in vitamin E than mature spinach is, which is already considered a good source of vitamin E. Wow right? <laughs> Hopefully this data has wowed you as much as it wowed me. I actually didn't come across, uh, I didn't come across it until after I was already sold on the health benefits of sprouts and microgreens. And when I saw it, I thought, well, duh, that's why I feel a million times better when I eat sprouts and microgreens. It only made sense. So I'm going to wrap up in terms of health benefits. Yeah, because there's more. Um, more health benefits. It's just endless. Um, so the last health benefit is that something else that sprouts and microgreens do is help maintain or restore the proper alkaline acid balance in your body. So with many of us eating processed acidic foods, eating alkaline foods helps neutralize acidic waste byproducts that we produce and restore balance. So the majority of sprouts and microgreens are alkaline, which is buckwheat and rye being slightly acidic. So that's it for health benefits. I know that was a lot to digest, but it's okay because there were so many enzymes in there to facilitate your digestion. What? <laughs> that was my corny sprouts joke, you guys. <laughs> Honestly, I think it only gets funnier every time I tell it. All right, let's move on to the other benefits. Um, <laughs> homegrown sprouts and microgreens, um, they cost a fraction of the ones you're going to buy at the store. So when you grow them at home, they are much cheaper, uh, not to mention fresher than those that you would purchase at the store. And when you buy organic seeds in bulk from companies like High Mowing Organic Seeds, it will save you a lot of money. Even if you, even if you buy those four ounce uh, packages that seeds come in, you will still end up ahead. So I calculated how much it would cost per ounce to grow mung beans from those mini four ounce seed packages, and you still end up saving money as compared to the store, 30% savings to be exact. So 30%, that would be the absolute minimum you would be saving because mung beans are some of the cheapest sprouts you can find at the store. And also this was with a mini four ounce package. So if you're buying in bulk, you'll save a whole lot more. And it, actually, if you really wanted to, you could even grow some of your seeds to maturity and save your seeds, but that's for a 401 class. And I'm pretty sure that, um, well, we're beginners here. <laughs> All right. Next, uh, sprouts and microgreens, they grow indoors year round, right? So you have year round access to fresh, delicious greens. So, you know, in terms of sprouts, they don't require any sunlight. They're low maintenance and they barely require any space. So living in your mom's basement is not an excuse for not growing them. You can eat fresh sprouts even on the coldest winter day. And if you're growing microgreens, all you need is a window that gets a decent amount of light, but it does not need to be perfectly facing south for your microgreens to grow well. Another benefit is the widely varied flavor of sprouts and microgreens. There's so many types of flavorful sprouts and microgreens that are so varied in texture and taste. So Christina hates mung beans, the ones on the bottom left there. So, you know, you're, you're allowed to hate one. You're going to find one that you like, I promise. So if you don't like mung beans, you might like the spiciness of, of radishes or the nutty flavor of sunflower microgreens, which are my personal favorite. I love sunflower microgreens. So there's definitely a sprout or microgreen that is adequate for your palate. Not to mention that your palate can change over time, right, um, the more you eat these greens. Next up, uh, you can be sure where they came from and how they were grown. So when you grow them at home, you get to choose what seeds to purchase and whether or not they are organic and you know that they're not drowning in chemicals when you're growing them. So you know they haven't been sitting out for days and days at the store either. You know that they're fresh and you can harvest them immediately before you plan on eating them, which ensures that they have the absolute best nutrients inside of them. 
Even a houseplant murderer can do it. <laughs> so if you've got a brown thumb, there's really no time to kill the sprouts and microgreens because there is no time to mess up. They are super low maintenance and you don't require much space to grow them. I shared earlier that I was terrible at keeping my houseplants alive in the past and I was not joking. So if I can grow these, uh, so can you. <laughs> so those are the main benefits of growing your sprouts and microgreens. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> so here's why you showed up today. You are looking to improve your health and diet, and you may not exactly be the most skilled gardener, but you want to stop spending so much on store-bought sprouts, and you want to get into an easy sprouting routine that works. You want to grow beautiful greens year-round, even in the dead of winter. So remember when I started sprouting, I was a total newbie. I was probably even at a disadvantage because I'm not exactly the plant whisperer. I managed to kill way too many house plants. And I have to say, at first, I was super confused navigating all the sprouts and microgreen seeds on the market. I was unsure which ones to eat to receive a balanced nutrition from them. I wasn't sure about my growing methods because gelatinous seeds need to soak for a different amount of time. And I was wondering what, I mean, soilless soil. When you're first navigating different types of soils at the store, learning about soilless, store, soilless soil is just extremely confusing. <laughs> then you wonder if you're overwatering. So it, it can get frustrating, and I would get frustrated when batches of sprouts wouldn't germinate or if they would mold. And you know, I gave up a couple times on the idea altogether by hiding my supplies up in a cupboard. But then Christina and I got together. We put our heads together to develop a sprouting routine that changed everything. Hashtag teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> so her and I got together and we made it easy. We created a step-by-step -step system that allowed us to not only grow healthy, thriving plants all throughout the year, but also a balanced variety of them that we could incorporate into our meals. So our system yields eight cups of sprouts and microgreens per week per person from leafy greens to beans to legumes to grains to nuts and seeds because yes, all of those can be sprouted and are part of a balanced diet. So we really want to share our love for indoor gardening with you and we really want to help you meet your goals. So I, we would love to introduce you to our new online workshop that we are so excited about. It's called the Sprouts and Microgreens Homegrown Living Foods Workshop. And in it, we've gathered the most important information about sprouts and microgreen nutrition, some of which we went through today. And in it, we share with you this step-by-step -step system for safely growing, harvesting, and eating sprouts and microgreens year round. So the class is divided into 15 video modules with an accompanying workbook and review questions as well. So I can walk you through those. In the very first one, you'll be setting your goals because we want to make sure that you're successful on your sprouting journey. Then we'll recap what we looked over today in terms of what exactly sprouts and microgreens are and their benefits. Then module four goes over safety because it's important to know how to select seeds properly, how to handle the sprouts and microgreens to avoid mold and pathogens. And then module five helps you navigate all the different kinds of sprouts and microgreens so that you know how to select from leafy greens, from beans, from grains, seeds, and nuts. So we make it easy for you to understand in which kinds to pick and choose from. And then module six goes over seed selection and storage. So there's many tricks to getting affordable seeds in bulk or at the end of the year when there are sales. So we also make sure that you're storing your seeds properly so that they last for years as well. Module seven, you'll get familiar with your sprouting supplies. There are many types of sprouters you can choose from. So we break down the pros and cons of each one for you to help you decide which one is for you. And then module eight, we get sprouting. So we go into detail about how to complete each step from growing sprouts to harvesting them properly and storing them to keep them fresh. And then module nine, we talk about exception sprouts. So these include gelatinous seeds that don't sprout using the normal method. We also cover how large sprouted nuts uh, need to be stored as compared to normal sprouts. And then module 10, we dive into microgreens. So we go over the supplies that you'll need to get started and help you navigate the soil types and fertilizer options. Module 10 digs into the techniques for growing microgreens efficiently and successfully step-by-step. Step. Module 12 is all about harvesting and storing your greens at peak nutritional value to ensure you get the most out of them. And then in case you run into any trouble, module 13 is all about troubleshooting. So if you've got moldy sprouts, fruit flies, yellow leaves, wilting greens, we go over troubleshooting methods to ensure your indoor garden will be a success. Module 14 goes 
over your weekly sprouting schedule. So we created an easy weekly schedule for you to grow a balanced variety of sprouts and microgreens and eat a cup of greens per day from the five different uh, groups of plants that we detailed in module four. And last but not least, module 15, where we go over some delicious raw food recipes from how to make sprouted bread to sprouted hummus, sprouted almond milk, and how to incorporate leafy greens, legumes, grains, and nuts and seeds into your meals. So we promise you will wow your house guests and yourselves with these recipes. <laughs> So the workshop includes lifetime access to the training videos and tutorials for all 15 modules. It's 60 minutes of videos. You get review questions for every module. So that's for both of us, uh, both you and for us to make sure that you're integrating the information that we're teaching you. And then an 88 page PDF workbook that contains modules one through 15, convenient checklists. You get printable guidelines and instructions. You have printable labels, your weekly sprouting schedule. And all of these are included to make your life as easy as possible and for it to be a simple step for you to start sprouting regularly. We also have bonuses, so you get access to an exclusive student forum to submit your questions, share your successes or difficulties. So it's a wonderful opportunity to get feedback, to develop friendships, to motivate one another. So, and this online community is currently hosted on Facebook. Then you get a $5 discount off any $25 purchase or higher from High Mowing Organic Seeds, which is where we get our seeds from. We love these guys because you can buy it in bulk or in small quantity, and they have a huge variety. And then you get access to workshop updates. So as we add content to our workshop over time, because we're going to keep learning as well, then you'll have access to all that updated information. And now on to our fast action bonus. <laughs> so this is the bonus I promised you at the very start of the webinar, and it's available to you guys only, you live viewers. So if you're interested in this workshop and you want to start the sprouting adventure now, then you will receive a group coaching call from Christina or myself to help you answer any lingering questions you might have about growing your greens. And even better than that, you will receive the exclusive blue blooper video compilation of the most embarrassing moments on set while we found the workshop. And honestly, that video alone is worth jumping on this offer for. It's absolute gold and I'm kind of mortified to be sharing it, but it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> So what is the value of a, what we're offering you? You get lifetime access to the videos, you get the workbook, you get the coaching call, you get the seeds discount, the student forum, uh, the bloopers video. <laughs> so a conservative value would be 105. So that is not your actual investment though. We worked really hard to make this class affordable for you because we believe everyone should have access to this valuable information that it should be within reach. So we are offering this class at a special introductory price of just $27. So for just $27, you get lifetime access to a training program that will have you growing luscious greens year round indoors. So if you want to jump on this, here is how to enroll. So right now you are on our Permacrafters page and you'll see that right below the video there, there's a link. It says, oh right, so there's the screen that you see, there's a chat box, there's another video. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll see a button that says want to learn more. So if you click on that button, and if you're in full screen, you'll have to, you know, uh, reduce your screen size first, but click on that yellow button. It'll take you to this beautiful page that goes into detail about what our class is about. So you can feel free to scroll that page and learn more about the class if you want. And to continue the enrollment, you would click on that button at the very top of the page that says you are in the right place and it will bring you to the sign-up page. So you'll see the class price is only $27, and you'll scroll down the page and enter your billing information. The payment is encrypted, and then boom, you have lifetime access to this training program and to the fast action bonuses if you do it right now. And also, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So I'm confident that if you apply yourself by watching all the videos and following the step-by-step -step instructions that you'll be fully satisfied. We really believe in this class, so we're giving you a full month to implement our strategies and our tips. On the small chance that it doesn't work for you, we'll happily give you a refund within 30 days of your purchase, so long as you've completed the video tutorials and implemented the strategies. So that is it. I'm gonna start the timer. So if you want to jump on this offer and you want to get the group coaching call with me and the hilarious bloopers video, you've got 15 minutes to do so. So in the meantime, I'll be taking your questions. So if you have any questions about the class, about this webinar, about sprouting in general, then please let me know in the chat box right now. Um, so I'm going to head over to the chat box. There we 
we connect again. <laughs> All right, sorry, sorry, I got distracted by reading the comments. Um, Robert says, I love radish microgreens. Yes, they are absolutely delicious. I love, I just love their spiciness, you know? They're really yummy in sandwiches or on soups. Anonymous says, wow, and lol. <laughs> Probably laughing at my corny joke. Um, oh, and then Christina says that it's not her favorite. That probably talking about the mung beans. Yeah, she will find any excuse to pass those on to me. But Anonymous says, this is great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so go ahead and ask your, your questions. Uh, I'll be hanging out. Oh, oh, there is more. I have to scroll down. Oh, it's just a yes. <laughs> Okay, I got excited. Um, well, I did get a question um, a couple of weeks ago uh, that might be pertinent to um, Laura, who's in Zurich. Um, so somebody asked me, okay, I'm not in the States, so I can't get my seeds from high mowing organic seeds. Where can I get my seeds from? Well, I had to ask myself, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so somebody, so I had to answer that question myself. So if, if I... If I, so I did some searching, and since I'm in Switzerland, I found out that you can purchase your seeds through uh, Salicorn. That's I'm gonna write it in the in the chat box. Or Christina, can you write it? It's Salicorn. S A L I C O R N E dot C H. And these guys carry Germline, Bardowick, and Bio Snacky seeds. So they are all uh, they're all organic and you can get them um, in smaller or larger quantities if you want. Then if you're in France, you can also look at Germline. If you don't have bulk options at your store, you can ask the store manager about the possibility of ordering uh, bulk Germline products. Um, and then BioSnacky is also available in France. In Germany, you have the Bardowick brand. If you're in the UK, you can order your seeds directly with Premier Seeds Direct. Um, and actually, Premier Seeds Direct will ship to many European countries, including Switzerland, and they have 400 gram options. They have one kilogram options um, so that's pretty great too I just did I, I ran out of my high mowing organic seeds because um, I just moved to Switzerland so I brought what I had but I just ran out of them so I purchased I did my first purchase through sedicone.ch uh, so um, I'll try to write that at the end because I can't figure out how to use a chat box right now and then um, yeah so that's it for for your seeds so if anybody else has any other questions, I'm happy to take them um, and go back to the timer and see. We have 11 minutes and 53 seconds. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to take any other questions. Um, a question I got a few weeks ago as well was, uh, what about time constraints in terms of growing sprouts and microgreens? It doesn't take that long. Really, the, the longest part is kind of uh, getting settled into your routine. So you know, you have to, if you're sprouting, it's super easy because really all you need is basic supplies like a, uh, a jar and uh, either some cheesecloth or a sprouting lid in your seeds. And if you're doing the microgreens, you'll need to, you know, find some containers. We encourage you to recycle containers and then some soil. Uh, so once you have that, you know, that might take, I don't know, half a day to organize. But once you've done that, it's really just five to uh, 10 minutes a day, I would say. And all, honestly, it would only be 10 minutes a day if you harvest a lot of microgreens because you can, you can harvest a ton if you, if you really wanted to and have like a giant production of microgreens. Um, so yeah. Well, I see there are no other questions. I know there's a little lag, but um, I just want to thank you all for, for joining. If you, you have any other questions, feel free to email us at hello at permacrafters.com. If you join the class, then we'll answer you in the student forum. So we hope you'll jump on this opportunity and start sprouting with us. And thank you so much for joining us. It was really wonderful to uh, talk to you from my apartment. <laughs> No, but for, for reals, guys, this, this was fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everybody. And we hope to see you in class. Take care. Bye.